Welcome to the first video in a multi-part series on solving mazes with reinforcement learning. So in this series, we're going to walk through solving some mazes in the Mujoko physics simulator um, wrapped in a gym environment. We're going to be using a PyTorch to build out a, an SAC algorithm, Soft Actor Critic, with an intrinsic curiosity module. Um, and uh, you know, we're not going to go really heavy on theory. You know, for those of you who have watched my videos before, um, you know that I am a fan of AI. I am not a professional. I'm not a researcher. Um, there are other people who are going to be able to go into that theory a lot more effectively than I am. This is really intended to be um, a really a coding walkthrough of how, you know, I took some of these uh, capabilities and went and solved a particular problem. So with that said, I still think it's worth spending a few minutes to cover just a little bit of the theory behind what we're going to be building. Um, so that's what this video is going to be about, is a quick intro to Soft Actor Critic and the ICM. And then uh, we're going to go ahead and get the environment set up so that we can start coding. And then in the next video, we're going to start working on uh, actually you know, coding out or setting up the maze that we're going to be learning on. So actor critic methods in general rely on an actor that's going to take an environment state um, pass it through some level, number of linear layers um, and then output an action and you know that action is going to be um, some you know move left move right in the environment in this case um, it's uh, it's a, a an open-ended action it's not going to be a, a discrete action space a continuous action space is what we're going to be doing um, the critic in training is going to look at the action taken by the actor and or it's going to take the state and the action and it's going to look at that and attempt to determine whether that state and action was a good idea um, and then throughout training the actor is going to continue to take actions the critic will continue to critique them and they uh, sort of learn together what a positive action is on the critic side and then you know, how to properly take those actions on the actor side. Um, and this ends up being a very effective methodology for these sorts of problems. Um, the ICM is a bolt-on. This is not uh, a normal part of actor critic. It's something that you can use with multiple different algorithms. Um, what a curiosity module is, is it's any network that is going to attempt to provide an intrinsic reward based on not knowing what's going to happen. So let me say that again just so it so it makes sense. So we're going to ask the ICM to try to predict. It's going to take a state and an action and it's going to try to output the predicted state. If it doesn't know what that predicted state is then it's going to provide a small reward to the actor during training. And the reason we're doing that is we want it to encourage exploration. We want the curiosity module to help artificially provide um, rewards to the actor as it goes when it doesn't know what's in the next state. Um, we're going to be building a fairly rudimentary version of an ICM but uh, this has actually been used to solve some fairly complex games by you know, basically providing some kind of, of base reward just to get the actor to continue to explore things that it hasn't seen before. Um, in the, now, let's think about why we're doing this. So most environments um, in gym are going to have a sparse reward option or a, a dense reward option we are going to be solving mazes with sparse rewards. So the only way the agent gets any kind of reward is if it actually finds the objective. Um, now, vanilla SAC can actually solve this, but uh, the ICM does help it solve it a little bit faster. It helps it explore more. And uh, I wanted to include it here in, uh, in this video series. So it improves performance. 
in this scenario and in some scenarios it, it can help to solve things that cannot be solved by the vanilla algorithm. Um, now I kind of covered actor critic, I covered um, what the curiosity module is. What is the soft part in soft actor critic? Well soft in this case is that it's not going to always output one best action. It's actually going to output a um, probabilistic array of actions and you can, uh, it's going to take, you know, say one action 80% of the time and then a different action 20% of the time versus, you know, what you might see with traditional cue learning where, hey, if it's over the 50% the mark, you're going to just always take that higher value action. Um, the reason it's doing this is, you know, other, um, there, there's always the explore exploit trade off in any reinforcement learning problem. For traditional Q learning, you have epsilon. And you know, for epsilon, um, a ratio based on epsilon amount of time, you're going to take some random exploratory action. What this does is it builds that exploration into the policy. So you know, your, your base outputs are going to provide um, that exploration by taking different actions in a probabilistic way. Um, if that's not making sense, it might it'll make a little bit more as we get into coding it. Um, but that's sort of the the base theory you need to just get started on this. Um, next thing I'd like to do is just show you what we're going to build, sort of what the uh, what the final results are going to be when we're done here. So here's a copy of the project, and I'm just going to run up my test function. So you can see here, the red ball is the objective, the green ball is the agent. And you'll notice it's not perfect. Sometimes it goes and wedges itself in a corner. But about 70% of the time, it's smart enough to bump along and go find its objective. And as you can see, it's, uh, it's caught itself in a corner here. Um, another component I forgot to mention at the beginning, we are going to be using curriculum learning. Um, this can learn just by starting with a more complex maze, but it learns much more efficiently if you set it up with a curriculum of, uh, of you know, increasingly more challenging mazes. So we're gonna start with a very, very simple maze. We're actually going to start with a um, line uh, just like a straight maze that's just sort of a hallway and get it to go find the reward there and then we're going to build towards the maze you just saw. Um, so this is going to be a fairly complex project. Uh, I hope you, you know, this is a coding walkthrough. I encourage you to type along with me through the videos. That's going to be what gets you the most out of it. Um, and I hope you hope you enjoy it as we uh, as we dive in here. So the first thing we're going to do is just go ahead and set up the environment. Uh, I'm going to, I'm in my, my target folder here, my lessons folder, and I'm going to call this SAC ball maze lesson. And I'm also going to set up a new environment with Conda. Oh, helps if I type it right. Conda create. So I'm going to call this uh, the full command. Let me make sure you can see it. Is conda create dash n, and then you'll give your environment a name. Again, if you're using Anaconda, if you're not, you can do this with virtual env or your preferred toolkit. Um, and then I'm going to use Python 3.11. I recommend you use the same just so you don't run into any compatibility issues. I'm going to say yes. All right, and then we're here. So I'm going to activate conda activate sac ball maze lesson. Um, and then we're going to go ahead and launch VS Code with code dot. And uh, if you're interested, I actually have a video on how I use VS Code and some of the you know, 
shortcuts and command line, you know, keyboard shortcuts I use, um, but I'm not going to cover that here. So we're in here in code. Let's go ahead and set up just some of our default um, files. I'm gonna go ahead and get a terminal open here now that we're in VS Code. And I'll go ahead and then conda activate sac ball maze lesson. So we're in the right place. Um, I am going to initialize git just because I like to put everything in git. It makes things a lot easier to have source control and to be able to roll forward and back, even if you're in a demo project or a lesson. Um, and we're going to start out with a requirements.txt. Some uh, some videos are going to you know, have a lot of a lot of pip, just direct pip commands to install things. I would much rather uh, walk you through generating a file that's going to be all of your requirements. So in our requirements.txt, we're going to need gymnasium, and we'll need that at 0.29.1. We're going to use gymnasium-robotics at 1.2.4. We're going to use pybolt at 3.2.6. We're going to use tensorboard. That's how we're going to visualize some of our uh, work here at 2.15.1. Uh, we're going to use, and then uh, the this could be a little bit different depending on your system, um, your, you know, GPU version, all that fun stuff. Um, I'm going to link instructions in the uh, video description on how to get PyTorch for your environment for with CUDA support. Um, but for me, it's extra index URL download PyTorch dot org slash whl slash cu118 and then from there i'm going to install torch torch vision and torch audio and what this does is this is basically going to def install all of these um, from just your your default um, python repositories and then it's going to go out here specifically and pull a compatible version of torch torch vision and torch audio if you don't do this, um, what you can end up with is a version of Torch successfully installed, but it's not going to have a GPU support and it's going to run much more slowly. Um, if you don't have a GPU installed in your machine, um, these things will run. They will just run much more slowly. Um, I will do a video at some point on how to uh, use something like RunPod to run your models remotely, but uh, that's not gonna be part of the first part of this course. So I'm making the assumption that you do have a GPU you can play with. I'm also doing all of this on Linux, so uh, you may or may not have cross compatibility issues on Windows. Again, uh, I can only build it on the operating system I'm on. Um, you know, I, I recommend Linux for compatibility as you start to get into um, you know, Mujoko and physics, other uh, robotics tools of that kind. So, all right, we've got our requirements TXT. So down here, I'm going to pip install dash r requirements TXT, and that's gonna start pulling in my dependencies. Um, while that loads, we're gonna go ahead as well and just create the appropriate git ignore for this project. There are a few things I want to ignore because we're going to be generating a bunch of files there. It's going to be runs, tmp, logs. Always want to ignore pycache and checkpoints. Every directory with checkpoints in it, we want to ignore in git. And then finally, let's just create a main.py and uh, make sure that we can execute Python in this environment. So. Here, I'm going to say if just best practice equals main, then we're going to print our hello world. 
and we have Python successfully printing out. Although you'll notice it's running uh, in base, which is not what we want. So I'm going to control shift P, hit the command palette here and select Python interpreter. And I want SAC ball maze lesson. So now it may actually take a restart. That's fine. We'll try it again. Going to ignore that update. And you'll notice now um, we are defaulting to our SAC ball maze lesson. All right. Um, with that, I'm going to go ahead and wrap up this video here. In the next video, we will be starting to create the uh, actual environment, the, uh, the maze that we're going to be solving, and uh, we'll take it from there.